what pinball boils down to is a fight against gravity. It's physical and it's visceral in the sense that you are basically a steel ball on a piece of wood and you're doing your best to try and keep it out of the hole. Two flippers, three balls, three chances to be able to achieve the goal of <laughs> grand champ. <laughs> So the IFPA is the International Flipper Pinball Association. I am the director of the IFPA. We are sort of a governing body of competitive pinball. There are currently a little over 30,000 players in our ranking system. If you host an IFPA registered event, essentially I register the tournament and I say, this is IFPA registered, and then I submit the results. And the amount of points that you earn for that tournament are based on the quality of the players that came and what their ranking is worth. IFPA 15 is coming up and there are gonna be some terrific players there. It's an invite only tournament for some of the best players in the world. You're not allowed in unless you have hit a certain ranking. And this is kind of like the biggest of the biggest. So where we are right now is my personal arcade that I call Press Start. I built it specifically to host this world championship. My goal was always to make sure the world championship came here to Canada. The very first Toronto Pinball Championship that I won, so I made that trophy myself. I made it and I ran the tournament and I won. <laughs> the Ontario Pinball Championships are, are uh, a proud achievement for me as the, the Ontario Championship has only happened five times and I've won it four. I went to Sweden to play in the World Championship and they had some pre-events and uh, one of them was the Swedish Pinball Open, so I became Swedish Pinball Champion for a year. I guess we don't need to talk about the big one, do we? I mean, that's not... <laughs> Obviously, uh, my biggest win being Pinberg, uh, a huge, gigantic cup from the people at Papa is my crowning achievement in competitive pinball. Uh, Jack Tadman, an unbelievably amazing player. He's very calm, uh, very good at ball control, and his shot accuracy is insane. So Jack is the heart of City Pinball. I've seen him do things that only the top, maybe 50 world-class players can do. He's the best player we've ever seen. You watch him play and he'll just be like, all right, I'm just gonna hit this ramp, does it, and I'm gonna hit that, and you're like, okay. But when you go and watch international tournaments where there are players that are ranked first in the world, you go, okay, I can see where your skill set still has ways to advance. He's an up and coming, but he still has his weaknesses. Definitely game knowledge is where he's lacking. I think that if he gets more used to being comfortable with the pressure of finals and rolling with some of the best players in the world, I think he's gonna do really well. Whenever he walks up to a game and he has that moment where he doesn't know what to do, it, it ends up very badly for him. One of his greatest strengths is never giving up. Even though he's behind a huge margin of points on his last ball, he just has that mentality to compete and never give up and he's relentless. Adam Becker is uh, an extremely good player, very, very good player. I'd still say in the same category as Jack, but better than Jack. No, maybe in a higher level. It's hard to say. No, he's higher than Jack. Adam Becker is one of the top ranked players in the world. He is from Keswick, Ontario, and he is a stone cold killer. Adam has played a lot of pinball. He knows the appropriate strategy for almost every game. And he is exceptional at keeping the ball in play and keeping his shots accurate. Punch the ball and then try and get control. You can bounce that over. And generally speaking, I'm gonna shoot that drop target because I wanna lock in a value for the spinner. All right, so we got that spinner lit. So we can shoot this spinner. And then we're gonna get a whole bunch of points for doing that. He is extremely analytical and is very, very single-minded in his approach to pinball. It's about how do you exploit the game to the maximum efficiency and generally, that wins the game. That wins the game in any context that he's playing in. So that's an example of a flipper skill that not everyone is capable of doing. 
Adam is one of the more colorful players to play competitive pinball, uh, but Adam is uh, Adam isn't afraid to show anger, uh, not at anybody else, only at himself. If he if he misses a shot, he swears a lot. Uh, a lot of people use "ah" uh, as like their when they can't think of something, but uh, Becker replaces uh with the F word. So if he can't think of it, he just starts saying the F word over and over again until he thinks of what he was trying to say. Adam Becker will never give you anything. He'll never give you an inch. He'll never give you a single thing. He's a high level competitive player. That's why, and that's why he wins. All right, some quick announcements. The schedule for today is gonna be two sessions, tiebreakers after session eight will be played before the lunch break. We have some leftover shirt inventory still. A couple of Toronto shirts that are extremely large. Phil Barman and Johan, you guys are in Quicksilver. Good luck. Rich Mallet, Levy, Jonas from Sweden, and Tatsunori. You again. Jack Tabman, Peter Gronk, Mitch, and Luke. Jack Tabman. He's here. Oh, he's here. He's in the country. Welcome to the IFPA 15 World Championships up here in Keswick, Ontario, Canada, and Adam Becker's amazing Press Start Arcade. Oh, man, it's amazing. I'm just freaking out here. I've had like an hour and a half of sleep, but I'm here, I'm having a great time. The best of the world is here, and I'm just very, very, very excited to be able to play in this tournament. We've got 64 of the best players from around the world playing. There's no easy matches in any of this. You got the best players from Italy, Spain, Brazil, Japan, all over North America. No doubt there's cool shots in this game. So we started with 64, we're now at 32, get through the next round, I believe it's 24, and then the next round is 16, 8, 4, 2, and you know, IFPA, IFPA 15 World Pinball Champion. Uh, I was a few points behind the pace that I needed to get to in order to qualify uh, for the finals. I was sitting in the mid 40s, and you know, at this level, there are no easy rounds. The great thing about pinball is that anyone can beat anyone uh, if you get enough breaks. And uh, you play well, get breaks, keep a good attitude is I think the most important thing and that's really all you can do. I'm just really happy that the Canadian players are really staying above the cut line. We got five Canadian players. We got Robert Gagno, Adam Becker, Jeff Teolis, my boy Jack Tadman, and Phil Birnbaum. Hopefully they all stay above the cut. They're just on the bubble, some of them. I hope they make it all the way through. Going into tonight, I'm feeling excited, I'm feeling exhausted, I'm feeling stressed. What I'm worried about would be fucking up and uh, not playing to my ability. My biggest issue is always myself and uh, I want to play as good as I know I can and not uh, screw up. You pop the ball out with your finger because otherwise it goes flying when you pull the play field up. All the mechanisms, the flipper systems here, and you can see that they're coils. These here are all drop target banks. So the targets that you hit, uh, the target will drop, and then once they all drop, they get reset. There are mental and physical attributes to making a great pinball player. We have all sorts of body shapes that play pinball. Physically, the easy answer is you need to know when to hit the buttons at the right time and you need to know when to shake the machine. There's some natural talent that's involved, obviously. Some people are just better at pinball than other people, but uh, the most prevalent thing I would say would be really good hand-eye coordination. Being able to keep track of the ball and then react quickly uh, in order to keep the ball in play is definitely paramount. Despite the introduction of a lot more technologies, the tilt bob has remained the same. Um, the arch nemesis of all pinball player. So the tilt mechanism has two parts. There is a plumb bob and there is a ring. The two components act like a switch. So when the tilt bob moves from someone nudging, the tilt bob will hit the ring and make a contact. So the flippers will go dead and then you also lose the ball.
I'm not the first one to equate pinball with certain, I guess, sexual responses. There's a lot of very suggestive pelvic thrusting, the way they nudge and thrust and move and nudge pinball machines. It has this kind of strange pull on people that it, it, the response to it is almost orgasmic. If you don't make that shot, that shot that you need on ball three, uh, you can lose your mind, you know? Or, you know, if you do make it, you can feel a, a, you know, a sense of uh, 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 gratification. If you do something on the pinball machine that satisfies the machine, it will tell you that it wants that and will, will sort of like encourage you to keep on doing that. And you have to really concentrate on that game. And if you lose focus, then you're gonna drain your ball very quickly. So you have to be very good at concentrating. In terms of mental attributes for pinball play, um, I would say the most important thing would be knowledge. When you're walking up to a game, instead of thinking like, oh, I hope the ball doesn't drain, instead you're going, all right, so what's the strategy on this one, right? Like, how do, how do I get the best at this game? A lot of the top players will watch other players play their game and very closely observe how the game is playing. Knowing the game is, uh, I, th I think it's a great advantage for most players. Um, because they know what to shoot for. They're gonna watch how much you can nudge it to tilt before you get a tilt, or where a shot is on a flipper to make a specific shot, like a ramp or a loop or a specific target. You have to make a shot, and then that shot will open up another shot, and they there's a sequence to those, and a strategy, right? Multiball is a, a great strategy if you wanna earn points quick. Every single modern, let's say, DMD and above game has got the option of multiball, which is usually a series of tasks you have to complete. Some are very simple, hit one shot three times. Other ones are more complicated. <laughs> Once you get to a higher level, uh, you have a game plan in your head. If there's a ball on your flipper, you need to know that I need to shoot this shot or I need to shoot this ramp or this shot is worth X many points. You have five, 10, 15 shots mapped out and the order that you need to hit them in and you have to be able to adjust that on the fly. If you're in a situation where you're just flipping the ball around, you've already lost. So playing pinball with Earl has been, I mean, it's been an incredibly fun and hilarious experience. Uh, we started when he was essentially three months. I have known Earl since he was coming in a baby Bjorn on Jack. It's hilarious that I am his Auntie Robin. <laughs> I'm the owner of the pinball bar that's around the corner. Now that he's a little bit older, uh, we can play together. So far it's split flipper, so I'll play the flipper on the right and he'll play the flipper on the left. Watching him actually wind up uh, you know, with his left hand and, and take shots or when he actually is able to hit a ramp or hit a, a, an orbit or a spinner or do something that you're actually supposed to do and, and seeing him get excited uh, is just the most fun part of, of playing pinball for me right now. Jack is still in a best of seven game with Andre Masikov, one of the best players of all time. It's amazing to watch someone that has such a unique style of play. I mean, he manages to play in a completely chaotic way, yet uh, he controls the ball so well. You have to notice the fact that he's actually chewing tobacco when he's playing. And there were times where he would hold the ball, bend down, pick up a cup, spit in the cup, bend down, put the cup down. Playing with Andre highlights that there are many ways to get to the same objective, and to try to play like Andre, I could never play like that, so I need to play my own style. As impressive as his style is, and as much as I'd like to be able to emulate certain aspects of his game, I, mean, I, I, I gotta be me, and when I'm playing, I have to play the way I play. I had an opportunity, we were tied 1-1, and you have to take advantage of the chances you have, for me, playing a player like Andre, I'm gonna have very few chances, and I need to take advantage of those chances, and I didn't. It's tough to see your friend, you know, kind of struggle, and he was really fighting really hard with that. He put up a huge game. He did pretty much all of the things that you are supposed to do in the game to put up a great score. So I knew ball three, uh, I would really, I would need a miracle. I had a few good saves, had a few good slab saves, got a few letters, but ultimately wasn't able to get into multi-ball and uh, you know, the ball always drains, so it's uh, only a matter of time. I do get very angry at the machine. Um, I've been known to push or shove or slam or punch or kick a machine on occasion. No! <laughs>
I call it the temporary pin sanity. Basically, it's this small moment where you have just a flip out rage moment. And some people are much more pronounced. They, they knock the tables, they slam tilt the tables. I do have a tendency to get uh, very angry at myself when I feel like I'm not playing up to my level, when I feel like I'm not accomplishing the things that I should be able to accomplish. I end up yelling at myself mid game, trying to shock myself out of whatever funk I'm in. He's gotten better. He used to rage tilt a bit more, but now uh, he just kind of like backs off. He swears a bit and then he gets back into it. I definitely feel like on a skill level, I'm at the same level of some of the best players in the world, um, but my mental game is still something that I struggle with every single day, not getting nervous, not getting angry at myself, not getting upset. Uh, right now, Adam Becker is playing jackpot. He is trying to catch my dad at the moment. He's uh, just started multi-ball, it looks like. He is needs to hit about four jackpots to be in first. So my dad has to play his last ball. Any lead that uh, Adam can get here would be huge. I'm actually going to a therapist right now to try and learn how to control my rage a little bit better. Um, I've tried to calm myself down, tried to not put so much importance on winning all the time. I do want to win. I feel like I can win every time. But the expectation that I have to is, I think, one of my biggest crutches. I made it through. I was playing Adam Lefkoff. It was a really intense match. My dad had a lead, and then Becker started playing better. And then it kind of went 3-3, went into overtime. And then uh, my dad kind of fell apart at the end there. It was an epic match. I was down 3-1 after Iron Maiden, and I blew up and smashed a machine as hard as I could, uh, which got me a yellow card. But I needed it. I was really, really, really frustrated with how I was playing. It was a bundle of nerves, and, and as soon as I did it, I immediately felt better. I was trying to calm myself down. I was trying to not freak out, but I was playing poorly, making mistakes, screwing up, and I just needed to release it, and I did. It's not becoming of someone like me, someone in the community like I am, and it's definitely frowned upon, but I needed it. I couldn't have moved forward without doing that, I don't think. I won two straight to bring us to sudden death elimination, and then I won two more to, to win and make it through to Sunday. Today is the top eight. It's really sort of the tipping point between making the podium or not making the podium. So it's a, it's a big day, it's a really important day, and it's gonna be, it's gonna be good. I played Colin. McAlpine is a very good player. He's the current Pinburg champion, which is pretty amazing. That's the tournament I won back in 2012. And uh, I just played better than him today. He's a very good player, so it wasn't his day, unfortunately. First final match was against Daniele, who's an excellent player, four-time world champion. He had me on the ropes early where it was 2 nothing him, and then I rallied back to make it 2-2. Two -two. And then he uh, found his wind again and uh, took me 4-2 at the end. So I got bumped into the third and fourth place round. I had to play Trent Dogenstein, another great player, been around for a very long time. It was a really funny first match on the jackpot. I, I thought for sure he was gonna catch me and he didn't. And then uh, Harlem, it was just a sort of a calamity of errors between the three games to finish it off, but uh, he ended up winning and that was okay. I used to work in television. I just recently left that job. And now I believe it or not work in a pinball bar called Tilt. Some of my best friends who are also pinball players and pinheads, they opened it up and I was like, I gotta be part of this. It's like your friends bought a candy store and now you're working at the candy store as well with your friends. It's kind of insane. I'm fortunate in that I live uh, two blocks away from Cabin Fever which is, uh, you know, in my view, the best place to play in Toronto. So I come here once a week, at least, for our league. And then if there's a night when my wife falls asleep early, uh, I'll try to sneak out around 10, 10.30 and come and play for a few hours, hang out, get in some reps. For most of my friends, I am the pinball guy, you know? Like, I'm just, like, insanely into pinball. So anytime they see a pinball machine wherever they're walking around, they're like, oh, geez, Joe would love to see them. I'm like, yeah, I know. I know where that is. Like, like, but thank you. I appreciate it. I have uh, a wonderful wife who has been with me for 17 years. She's been very, very, very supportive, quite obviously, in my pursuits in terms of competitive pinball and building this facility. If 
she comes to me and she says, I want a 10 foot tall Optimus Prime and I want to bring that home. I'm like, cool, how do I help? And the same thing with this pinball building. I said, I want the world championship to come to Canada and I need 60 machines and a gigantic building to do that. She's like, all right, let's get started. Thank you to everyone that played, everyone that watched. Thanks to the Beckers for doing it. Oh, a special thanks to the Beckers for ponying up for the deluxe porta potties. All right, let's get to the good stuff. Fourth place, taking up a thousand bucks. And fourth place trophy, Adam Becker. <laughs> and it's not a pinball trophy, so it's quite happy. This is all encompassing to me now. Um, I don't really have any other hobbies. I don't have anything else that I do outside of pinball. I'm the pinball guy. There's, there's, there is no other, there is nothing else. Third place, we'll Photoshop him in later. Taking on $1,500 in the third place trophy, Chen Augustine. <laughs> there's always something new that comes up. The first few times that things break and you figure what's wrong with it and you fix it, you think that you can do anything. Second place. The most fierce 19 seed we've ever had in the final. <laughs> Taking home $2,500 in the second place trophy, Daniel Ayat. Yeah. Pinball is analog. It's always changing. It's variety. You really can't get bored with it. You can never finish a game. You can't complete it. There's grand champs, but that's still not the end. Like, there is no end. All right, that's freaking kid. <laughs> Taking <player>. home <laughs> top qualifier of $200, Woo. $1,000, the Space Jet, title of world pinball champion. He's won 11 games this year, reigning there. <laughs> pinball makes you feel special. It has that ability to in a very, very small way, make something that seems completely superfluous and, and uh, unimportant seem like the most important thing in your life at that very moment. I think there are a lot of parallels between pinball and how you approach life. You need to have a plan, you need to know what you're doing, and you need to be <laughs> able to adjust that plan on the fly. If there are changes, if things don't work out, if you're not able to execute in the way that you had originally intended to execute, uh, you need to stay calm and you need to be able to switch it up and just roll with it. <laughs>